Boys and girls, allow me to introduce you to one of the sweetest artists who you'll ever meet, Peter Anton, an American artist and sculptor, creator of many sweets, so many, in fact, that he's often referred to as Candy Warhol. These giant food sculptures are just that, sculptures even though they look extremely realistic. Peter Anton is our inspiration for our new project of creating our very own fake or faux box of chocolates. Boys and girls, today let's get started on our box of chocolates. So the first thing we are going to do is to make the box that our chocolates will be in. We're going to make it appear as though it's a box of chocolates that is missing the lid so you can see the chocolates inside. So let's start with that. The first thing you're going to need is a long piece of tag board that's 24 inches by one inch. And I'm going to begin by folding that in half just like this, and already you can see I have a bottom of my heart. My next step is to bring the tops of my heart inward just like that, and you can kind of already see my heart shape. To get it to hold into place, I'm going to use my stapler. So I'm gonna bring that inside part outward just a little bit so I can slide my stapler right there, and that will hold it in place. If it wants to continue to stay up, just bring it back and that'll even it back out. And now we have the beginning of the armature or the structure for our candy heart box sculpture. Now that I have this made, I need to make the bottom of my heart box. So to do that, I'm going to use another piece of tag board. And this that I just created is going to be what I trace around. The problem is, is that this is very wobbly. So it's not exactly the easiest thing to trace around. So the best thing to do is to have your hand open really wide stand up and press down firmly so that the heart does not wiggle as you trace. If you can't do that, it might help you to get a friend who can help you hold it in place or who can help you with the tracing part. As you're tracing, don't press too hard up against the heart with your marker because that'll also push the heart inward as well. All right, that's good enough. So now what I need to do is go ahead and cut that heart out. To get these two things to stick together, we're going to use two things. First thing we're going to use is tape. We will be taping these two things together. Once the tape is on there, we're going to use something called paper mache. Paper mache is what we will be using to permanently attach these two together and also make our sculpture have a lot more structure. So when we put our candy in there, there's not a chance that it will fall out. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And your first step is to take your tape and peel off a nice big piece. And then you're going to need to make that one into smaller pieces. With my smaller pieces of tape, I'm now going to create something called tabs. I'm putting tape that is half on the heart and half hanging off the heart. And I'm just going to put those little tabs all the way around the edge of my heart, skipping a little bit of a space. The tape is half on the heart and half off of the heart, going all the way around using all the tape that I have. And now I need to go ahead and attach this to this guy. So when I lower this down, I'm going to set it on there really gently and then just also very gently push the tape down. If I press too hard when I'm pushing the tape down, what will happen is is that the tape will cave my heart in. So now that I've kind of got the tape in place, I can flip it over and give the tape a little massage. Oh, tape likey. If there's any gaps... Or if the tape isn't exactly doing its job and not quite sticking, don't worry about it too much because we're going to fix that in just a moment with our paper mache. So now my candy box structure is complete. Now I'm going to flip my candy heart over, but before I do, I'm going to put my name and teacher code right inside. I will be using the paper mache on the back. 
So I'm gonna move this over. Let's talk a little bit about what paper mache is. For our paper mache, we will be using newspaper. We will also be using what I call elephant snout because that's exactly what the texture feels like, but it's wheat paste. Or we can use art paste. There's a lot of different ways you can make this mixture. Basically, it's going to act like a glue. It's going to feel a little bit not going to lie, disgusting, but think of it as disgustingly fun. So our goal is to cover our heart with this paper mache newspaper mix. So to do this, you're going to take one piece of newspaper at a time, put a little bit of paper mache on your fingers, almost like you're starting to put on lotion. It's kind of what it feels like, a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of massage the paper mache all the way down the paper. When I start to run out, I get a little bit more. Massage it all the way down the paper. I should not see lumps of paper mache. It should be nice and smooth. So I'm just taking my fingers and wiping it all the way down the paper. You can see this is some sticky stuff. Now what I'm going to do is make some diagonal lines across my heart like this, but I need to be gentle. I don't want to cave my heart in. I'm gonna flip this over and smooth it as I go, even pushing it into the inside of the heart. Any part that did not stick, this is important. Unlike the tape, we need to make sure everything is stuck down. If it comes unstuck, then just try using more paper mache. Remember, it's just like glue. So I'm gonna take another piece, put a little on my hands, there's lots of different ways to get this paper mache on your newspaper. I know as you work, you'll find the way that works the best for you. Just make sure you don't have any lumps of paper mache on there. Look for those empty spaces. It's good to overlap or put one piece over another because that will make your candy heart even stronger. I'm gonna flip this around. Remember, it needs to go all the way around and flipped on the inside. Nothing should be sticking out. I'm gonna work on adding more strips and more strips because the more that I add, the better until there's no more poster board on the back or the sides peeking out. Now that I've got the back done and the pieces of overlap to the side, I'm going to stop working on the back. If I continue pressing too firmly on the back or adding too much paper, what could happen is, is that my heart box could cave in. I can already tell it's happening a little bit to the side. So what I'm going to do is flip it now around this way. And now I'm going to use some papers that are going to lay inside and climb up the sides a little bit. I don't have to cover the entire box this way. I'm just doing a couple of strips to help make my box a little stronger. And because right now I can tell it feels a little bit wobbly in some places. If ever your newspaper is too long, just go ahead and tear it. So I'm putting one inside massaging it gently and letting it climb up the side wall and that will help make my candy box even stronger. Notice I have one hand inside, one hand outside as I press, not pressing too firmly because I don't want to accidentally cave it in. So I'm being gentle the whole time making sure I don't have too much of that paper mache. And I'm going to work on adding a little bit more to the inside, climbing up the sides now. Okay, now that I have most of my box done, making sure now to go back and smooth down anything that's sticking out, 
We've covered most of the sides, most of the back, and most of the insides. That should be enough so that way when my candy heart box dries, it'll have a nice strong structure. We are going to let these dry on a piece of plastic so they don't stick to the paper like mine was starting to. And now we can talk about how to create our candy that will go inside while this dries. Let's talk about how to make those plaster candies. We're going to be using plaster, which just looks like a powder water and we'll be mixing it together with the water. You'll need one and a half parts plaster to one part water. And you'll probably want to mix it in something that you won't use again. So I'm recycling a container. You'll also need something to put your plaster in to help it keep its shape. So I've gotten for candy, uh, I've gotten an ice cube tray and an egg carton. So let's talk about how to mix that up. The key is you're going to pour this water in slowly. It actually helps to have somebody pour it as you stir it very slowly. The reason you want to do everything slowly is because you're trying to minimize air bubbles. If you do it too rapidly like that, you can already see bubbles forming. So your key is to go slowly. The fewer bubbles you have, the better. So I'm stirring this up very slowly. The cool thing about plaster is it goes from a powder form to a liquid when water is added. And when it dries, it turns to a solid. So right now I'm mixing it until it feels like there's no more lumps and I know it's ready. I can't let it sit in the container or else it'll keep the shape of the container. I really like for candy the way that some of my egg cartons create a cool shape. So look for things that you think will make an interesting shape and you just simply pour it in. And this will need to dry probably for 30 minutes to an hour before you can pop it out. You'll be able to tell if it's dry because when you look at it, it should be bright white. If it's even slightest bit gray, then you know that it still needs a little bit more time to dry. So I'm gonna let this sit. If you see any bubbles forming, just gently tapping on it will help to pop those bubbles. I'm gonna scoot this out of the way. Here's one I did just a while ago. So now you can see they are bright white. I can tell they're dry and they are a solid to pop them out. Just going to turn my egg container over. Actually, I think I can just pop them out from the bottom. And it kept the really cool shape of my egg container, which is gonna make awesome shapes for candy. All right, now that I've popped out my different chocolates for my containers, or my fake or faux chocolates for my containers, I'm ready to make them look more like chocolate. So I would like you to pick out three where you like the shape. And as you can see, I've got more than three. I think I'm gonna do a variety of chocolates because usually when you get a box of chocolates, there's several different flavors. So I think I like this shape a lot. I like this rectangular one. And I think I'll go for this one. So I've got my three picked out and I've got them on a plate and now I'm going to paint them and be thinking about how chocolate looks. Do you want milk chocolate or dark chocolate? I'm gonna spread them out on my plate. I don't have to paint the bottom. I do need to paint the top and the sides. So that means I'll probably have to hold my plaster as I'm painting, which means my hands might get dirty. As you know, you can always wash your hands when you're finished. So now that I've got this one done, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint them. So I think I'm gonna paint all of mine a nice dark brown because ch dark chocolate is my favorite. If you want to have some that are milk chocolate, then you'll need to mix your brown with some white to make it light. When you have a light color, it's called a tint. And that light brown will make the perfect milk chocolate. So I'm gonna finish painting all of my chocolates, keeping them on my plate. Boys and girls, remember when you're using puffy paint to make sure to test it at least three times on a post-it note first. You never know how quickly or how slowly the puffy paint is going to come out of the container. Once you're ready, you can go ahead and start decorating your candy. Think about how you can make your candy look like something that people would want to actually eat. Would they really want to eat a piece of candy that had giant blobs of puffy paint 
or icing is what we're trying to achieve all over it. I think not. So boys and girls, be wise with your execution or your placement of puffy paint on your candy. Think about the different kinds of things you can do and be creative. Have fun. Dots, lines, stripes, whatever you can imagine. I can't wait to see what you do to make your candy something fun, creative, and unique. Okay, let's talk about painting that heart-shaped box. It's nice and sturdy now that I added all of that paper mache. So now I'm ready to add a little bit of paint to kind of hide the newspaper or anything else I want to disguise to make it look even more realistic. You can pick a couple of different colors to use on your box. Whenever you change colors, please make sure to wipe your brush on your messy mat until it wipes and sweeps clean. Maybe I can add a little bit of purple on the inside. I could do some lines. I could even make a pattern. It's totally up to you. Keep in mind, your candies will probably cover up most of it. Just kind of having my paint do a little dance. Sometimes it might even help to hold it on its side to paint a little bit that way also. Sometimes you can do something called dry brushing, meaning your brush just barely goes over the surface of what you're creating to add a little bit more color to it. Switch to a little bit of red. Anything to kind of hide that newspaper so that when people look at our box of chocolates, they actually think it's real. All right, my box of chocolates is still wet, but I'm too excited and I really want to add my chocolate to it. So when you get ready and your box is dry and so is the puffy paint from your chocolates, you'll need to have me help you hot glue or we can use tacky glue to stick them in the little wrappers to make them look even more realistic. It's okay if they don't fit perfectly. Then we will be gluing them inside of your box of chocolates. So you might want to think about where you want your chocolates placed before I glue them down. 